Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and welcome to a new season of Adventures in Compliance. In this season, we are going to review the short stories which appeared in the Strand Magazine from July 1891 to June 1892 and were collected in the book, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Over the next 12 episodes, I will be reviewing each story and mine them for leadership, compliance, and ethical lessons. Today, we take up The Adventure of the Copper Beaches, which appeared in the Strand Magazine in June of 1892 to consider some of the top ethical lessons from this great story in the first book entitled The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Our story begins as Violet Hunter visits Holmes asking whether she should accept a job as a governess, a job with an extraordinary condition. She is enticed by a phenomenal salary, as originally offered of 100 pounds a year, later increased to 120 pounds. But she balks at having to cut her coppered-colored hair short. This is one of the peculiar provisos she must agree to. The employer, Mr. Ruckassel, seems pleasant enough, yet Miss Hunter has obvious suspicions. After the salary is raised... She accepts the position, and after a fortnight, Holmes receives a message beseeching him to come to see her in Winchester. Miss Hunter tells him of the most singular story she's ever heard. Mr. Ruckassel will sometimes have Miss Hunter wear a particular electric blue dress and sit in front of the reading room with her back to the window. She began to suspect she was not supposed to see something outside, and so she kept a small mirror hidden in her handkerchief. And it turns out she was right. A man was standing on the road looking towards the house. There are other unsavory things about the household. A six-year-old boy she was supposed to look after is incredibly cruel to small animals, and the servants are very sour. There's a great mastiff on the property, and it is let out at night to prevent anyone from coming in. Perhaps the oddest thing is... There is a part of the house she does not have access to, and one night when Mr. Rucastle passes out drunk, she gets a key, and she finds uh, in the room a, um, a very spooky place, and she runs out into Mr. Rucastle's arms. With the great detective's aides, it is discovered that someone has been keeping a prisoner in this wing, and the purpose of Miss Hunter becomes clear. She is to convince the man watching from the road that Rucastle's daughter, Alice, uh, whom she resembles, is no longer interested in seeing him. Holmes finds the room empty, and Rucastle arrives and thinks the trio has helped the daughter escape and goes to fetch the Mastiff. Unfortunately, the dog has been starved for longer than usual and attacks him. Rucastle's daughter escapes with her fiancé and thereafter marries. Watson notes that Holmes appears to have been drawn to Miss Hunter, However, to his disappointment, Holmes does not show any interest in Miss Hunter after the mystery is solved, which was the real force behind his feelings. Rucastle survives as an invalid, kept alive solely by a second wife. Miss Hunter becomes a principal of a girl's school where she has, quote, considerable success. So what are some of the top ethical lessons from the story? Well, first, honesty, integrity. Throughout the story, Holmes demonstrates his commitment to honesty and integrity and is determined to uncover the truth and restore justice. Compliance professionals and business leaders can learn from this by being honest and transparent in their dealings with others and upholding their ethical principles. Two, respect for privacy. In the story, Holmes is careful to respect the privacy of the individuals involved and to avoid intruding on their personal lives. Compliance professionals and leaders in business can also learn this by respecting the privacy and confidentiality of employees and being mindful of their own actions and words. Next up, responsibility. Holmes takes responsibility for his actions, just as every compliance professional must do so, and indeed business leader. And you must be um, responsible for those around you as well. Fairness. Throughout the story, Holmes strives to be fair and impartial, and he's determined to uncover the truth. 
This is a requirement of the Department of Justice's evaluation of corporate compliance programs that the chief compliance officer is the holder of institutional justice and institutional fairness in an organization. So this point cannot be overemphasized for the compliance professional. Number five, responsibility for the truth. We do not talk about the truth often enough in the compliance world, although this is talked about more in the ethical world, but simply telling the truth is one of the most important things you can do as a compliance professional, and it will engender employee trust in a way that uh, many other ways will not do so. Holmes recognized the importance of uncovering the truth and takes this responsibility seriously. Recognize this in yourself as a business leader and as a compliance professional. And finally, compliance with general laws and regulations. In this story, we have an employer's actions uh, to hide a uh, fiancé from her betrothed. This is clearly an illegal action, and illegality, of course, is not something that compliance professionals can tolerate. They must comply with all laws, but more important, you must have a culture of compliance in your organization. So as you work towards improving your culture of compliance, this will give you an opportunity to have a uh, much better overall effective compliance program. Additionally, once again, the Department of Justice has said they will evaluate corporate culture as a part of an assessment in an FCPA or other white-collar enforcement action. So having a culture of compliance, or rather a corporate culture of doing business ethically and in compliance, will lead to having a more effective compliance program and something that you can document and demonstrate should the Department of Justice or Securities and Exchange Commission ever come knocking. This is Tom Fox again. This concludes our exploration of the first book of Sherlock Holmes, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I hope you will join me when we begin our next season of Sherlock Holmes stories in the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever great podcasts are listened to. If you are a lover of Sherlock Holmes and would like to come on an upcoming podcast and talk about your favorite short story with me. I'd love to have you. As you could probably tell, I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and I find a lot of compliance lessons learned in the Sherlock Holmes oeuvre. Adventures in Compliance is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.